Hello and welcome to this little ditty about Pi game in Python. So, in case you don't know, you need to download Python from python.org. And then you can either click like downloads and click this one to get the newest version. I think this will uh, give you maybe the 32 bit Windows version if you're on Windows. And if you're using Linux, you should probably just use like app git install or something like that and install it that way and if you're using Mac you can figure out how to do it for yourself because I'm not a multi zillionaire that can afford a Macintosh even though they are one of the best priced used PCs but I still have yet to buy one in that form or fashion okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna forego the 3.8 release because I actually prefer 3.7 so I'll click on all releases and then I'll scroll down a little way and you can see here's sort of the gist of the recent release schedule 3.8 is of course the newest branch 3.7 is now on security fixes as of version 3.9 or 3.79 I believe um, 3.6 is on security 3.5 still even on security which is cool 3.4 is unsupported, but if you're using Windows XP, you will have to use 3.4. And I'm not sure whether or not the newest Pi game will actually work on 3.4. But according to the website, it implies that it should. 2.7, I would advise avoiding Python 2.7, unless for some reason you need to support or older code or something like that. Okay, and then I'm going to scroll down here for the latest releases. You can see the very latest release was actually 3.5, Python 3.5 uh, release 10. But I, like I said, prefer 3.7. The 3.7 series is really fast. And a lot of the updates that I've seen in 3.8 just don't really tickle my fancy. So I look at that as extra cruft that could possibly slow stuff down or whatever. And I think... For some reason, I tend to like odd versions of Python best. So there's 3.79. I click the download link, and that will come in here. And you can actually download for all the platforms in here. But if you're using a Unix-like system, I recommend using your built-in Unix-like installer. It's basically like a command line version of an app store. It's like an app store without the fancy graphics, usually. Um, some of them do have fancy graphics, but whatever. Anyway, uh, you can get the Windows x86 executable installer because believe it or not there are even Windows 10 computers especially little like netbooky tablet computers that still have 32-bit versions of Windows so if you're really unsure that would probably be the one to grab um, embeddable zip I'd avoid it doesn't come with much and then there's also the web-based installer but I'm not particularly a fan. This one will download all of Python, which I think is like 30 megabytes or something. It's not very big. And this one will download like a few megabytes and then pull in exactly what you need. But however, I know that I am running a 64-bit Windows and I do want to do the full install and everything. So I'm going to grab this Windows x86 64 executable installer and click that and download it. But the funny thing is, is that I already have it downloaded. So I'm just going to go over here and click okay to install it and then I'm going to customize installation whoop I spoke too soon I'm going to click down here to add Python 3.7 to path which will make it so that if I come in here and run a command prompt then I'll be able to just type in Python and run it and I'm also going to do customize installation I'm going to go ahead and do all these documentation pip which will allow us to install Pygame TCLTK and idle so this is the windowing uh, editor the built-in Python editor and TCLTK is the stuff that makes that possible and it's also going to make that available to your programs the Python test suite I'm not going to install if you want to do that and run all the tests for fun you can but I'm just going to not install that it's not necessary and PyLauncher, if you don't already have a recent version of PyLauncher installed, that's just where you can type PY instead of Python on Windows, which I'm not a personally a big fan of. Um, it helps, like if you have multiple versions of Python installed, which I do, then this will allow you to select, like you can just type like Py3 and automatically get the latest Python 3. 
or you can type pi2 and get Python 2 you know if you want to do that or you can type like more specific to get more specific versions or test between 32 and 64 bit versions it w I think it would have been nice if Python would have just stuck to the same system that they used on Linux where Python referred to Python 2 and Python 3 referred to Python 3 and then if you want a more specific version you could type like Python 3 dash or 3.7 you could just add on to the executable name and get the more specific version so Windows kind of breaks the continuity there and it creates this janky system like you can't type Python 3 on Windows which I think is kind of ridiculous honestly but anyway and ran on that and I'm gonna click next I'm gonna install for all users associate with Python create shortcuts for installed applications add to environment variables pre-compile the standard library this will make the install take significantly longer but it should Python itself should run significantly faster because it's going to or maybe it does pre-compile them once you actually run that particular library but I always go ahead and just pre-compile them all now and get it out of the way I'm not sure I don't think you need to have a C compiler installed to do that but I do have several C compilers so who knows maybe it is using one um, the download debugging symbols no way and download debugging like binaries no way you don't want those unless you're like debugging Python itself for some reason okay and then C program files Python 37 if you're running 64-bit Windows and you see an if you see something like an x86 right in here then that means you're on a 64-bit version of Windows and you may want to hit cancel and go and download the 64-bit uh, executable installer and rerun setup so that you actually get a 64-bit version which may potentially take advantage of optimizations available to you um, otherwise you'll be fine it will just install a 32-bit program on top of your 64-bit Windows and you'll probably never notice a difference if you just downloaded from the main page and you're seeing program files without the x86 um, you may actually have a 32-bit version of Windows so you may have got the right one I imagine if you download the 64-bit one you'll know it will yell at you right when you try and run the installer I imagine but anyway I'm gonna click install and of course the install for all users will require administrative privileges if you saw that little badge on the install button so if you try and do that and it says hey you need administrator password and you don't know that password then just go back uncheck install for all users and go forth and it should just install it into like your app data folder or something like that so you can see here the Python 3.79 standard library so now hmm I guess it isn't compiling yet it will look like it's going really fast usually and then when it gets to the tail end it will start compiling those uh, those built core libraries and that will take at least several minutes so anyway that's that I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and I will restart the video when we're ready to install Pygame there's pip so see you in a minute or two my time and a second or two your time wow that was really quick I don't ever remember the pre-compilation process going by so quick so either they've somehow optimized that to make it go way faster or maybe it didn't really pre-compile them I don't know but anyway the installs done and I'm going to click close and now in theory I should be able to open a command prompt window you can find a command prompt window by just typing CMD into your start menu which probably looks more Windows 8 or 10 ish than this one but this is Windows 8.1 with the Windows 7 style start menu added back to it so in Windows 7 or Vista of course you can type down here XP you're not going to be able to do that unless you have desktop search or something clunky like that installed and in the most recent versions of Windows you can just start typing like I think I can just go down here and just type CMD just like that and then slowly but surely it will come up just like that and I can't remember yeah let me do that again CMD and then uh, I 
don't remember, it's been a while since I've used Python. I think we might need to run as administrator if we want to install Pygame for all users. So let's see, I'm gonna go cd backslash enter and then cd pro tab complete. And of course you'll need to hit tab maybe twice if yours was installed in x86. And uh, then I'm gonna go from here, pi tab Python 3.7, that's the one I want. And then I can do a dir forward slash w and, or if you're really cool, you can do HD, but anyway, a dir forward slash w, and um, we can see there's Python right there. And actually, let me go back here and just go where Python. And you can see it found it because I told it to add it to my path. So otherwise, if you can't find it, you can go all the way there and navigate to that Python. Let's see if we can do where pip. Ooh, and it found pip. What about where pip3? Yeah, what about where pip 3.7? Oh yeah. So anyway, that's what I was saying, how Python should do this same type of thing that pip's doing. Because if I do where Python 3, it doesn't know. Where Python 3.7, it still doesn't know. So it's pretty dumb. But anyway, and you can, of course, make your own shortcuts that would do that as well. But I just think that why? Why should you have to do that? Okay. So anyway, since we know we're using the right pip by using that where, because one thing is if you have multiple versions of Python installed and you just call pip, you might call the wrong one. So make sure and call pip with as much detail appended onto the end as you might need. And that stands for like Python installer package or something. That's what we'll call it. I don't remember exactly what it stands for. So, uh, and then there's virtual environments. I'm not going to get into that. I think that's overly complicated. And for most people, especially like Python beginners in this day and age, you know, the Python three and a half and higher age, it's just, it's not necessary like it seemed to used to be in the past when there was like, you wouldn't necessarily always want to use the newest library and things were whatever. To me, I just, I just go for it and just install everything urinate into the wind as one might say okay so i'm going to do pip or just to be pro pip 3.7 install and then pygame it's really that easy and this should turn me down i think i need to be an administrator defaulting to user installation because normal site package is not writable requirement already satisfied pygame huh that's funny because i i <laughs> I forgot to delete my Python 3.7 folder when I just uninstalled it. So you're using pip 20.1.1, a newer version is available. I'll tell you what, every time you install Python, it's gonna say that. My advice is don't upgrade pip. I've never found a reason that I can remember. Like if you have problems with pip, besides this little warning, then maybe upgrading it might be a good idea. But all I've ever had in the past, especially with older, like if you install Python 3.4, do not upgrade pip or pip will stop working. It's like that. So just get used to it complaining to you and don't upgrade. But if you do want to upgrade, see, they recommend this really long one, Python minus pip. What they're doing here is they're telling you how to make sure that you use the exact right Python by calling the Python 3.7 that you just invoked and then telling it module pip install da, 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 upgrade pip. By just doing that pip 3.7 thing that I showed you, you can just say, uh, you could literally do pip 3.7, or you could really, if you only have one Python install, you could do that, but you could do pip 3.7 um, install dash dash upgrade pip and honestly, I don't even think, okay, yeah, I don't even think you need the upgrade part, but that's what you do, and that would work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to exit this, because you can see if it installs in program files, then it's actually installing in the system-wide. So right here it says in program files, lib, site packages. So it was going to try and just install it in my app data folder. Um but then it found that I already had it system wide, so it said forget about it. So what I'm gonna do is quickly jump out of this. I'll go down here and do this version and go CMD, and this will work the other way too with the Windows 7 style menu. And you right click and say run as administrator. And this is only if you want to install it system wide. If you don't have administrator 
uh, privileges once again you can just install to your user folder and pretty much the same process I don't get why my font is so small um, properties font what do we need that one's ugly that one looks better okay alt space X okay now I've got these so for some maybe this is good to go over too. like if your terminal yours is probably smaller maybe taking up like half the screen roughly um, so you can just right click do the properties thing like I was doing and I obviously need to set the width to about maybe 100 and then make sure they line up over here so you don't get the uh, you see when I highlighted the box it automatically did that that way you don't get this annoying like side scroll bar unless you're doing something like SQL to the console where that might be handy and then um, height is this is the screen buffer size so I can actually set this height to like more if I wanted to that will give me a roughly 500 lines of scroll back and then this height is saying how many lines I can view on the screen right now so anyway that looks kinda good the colors I should probably be nicer and give you like a cyan or something so you can let's find something nice looking whites kinda ugly grays kinda whatever gold gold's kinda whatever there like a dark cyan maybe okay so now you can see the scroll bar across the bottom has gone and I just have this one where I can do like 500 lines of uh, whatever so I'm actually gonna make that so if you right click on here and you do get some little sub menu it's like hey where's the properties you can right click again right there and then go to properties Ooh, that's the wrong one where was okay I'm supposed to right click on the title bar I'm sorry then go to properties there and I'll pick bright cyan Oop. what was screen backgrounds black screen text bright cyan okay that way just in case it's hard to see on the video or whatever and uh, now I lost my train of thought of what I was doing okay now I went into the administrator command prompt so now I'm gonna go back and say pip minus minus help and if it goes by too quick I can do CLS or clear in a Unix like environment you can type clear same thing CLS clears the screen and I'll type pip minus minus help and then I'm gonna pipe that to more on a Linux Unix like you can do pipe it to less instead and that's gonna give me a little prompt and let me read before and then I can hit like spacebar to get to the next screen so it says pip command followed by options so it's pip install da, 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 da. I'm gonna pip uninstall hit spacebar to get down here PIP 3.7 uninstall pi game you don't need to do this step I'm just doing this to make sure whatever warning would remove proceed yes successfully uninstalled so now CLS to clear the screen on Windows and I'm going to do that pip and this time I'll just do pip3 for fun you should do 3.7 or whatever Python you intend to install to or like before like I showed you you can do where pip and you know if only one pip comes up and it's the right one then you can go ahead and run that pip and if for some reason you didn't add it to your path it will you can just literally like CD to this folder I'm gonna highlight that you can write and then right click it you might have to do like a right click edit mark and then highlight that path and then right click on it again to copy it and then we can do a CD space right click which you might have to do a right click edit paste to get that but anyway um, and then if I do a dir slash w we can see in here there's pip 3 pip 3 7 pip whatever so if you need to get to it like that and if you're in this directory then you should be able to just type pip or of course if it's like a Linux thing in a different folder you just do a little pip like that but anyway uh, pip install pygame let me clear the screen so there's no pip install pygame just like that and now it's installing it system wide it's grabbing the wheel that it's going to install from so it looks like pygame 1.9.6 is at this time the latest version and then once this is installed we'll have pygame 
and we can come over here I have some pygame.org stuff opened up right there you can go to this website and you know in the docs here's the programming intro there's um, some general tutorials here there's this is the front page for the regular documentation and line by line chimp I don't think I've ever seen this particular tutorial so I wanted to maybe I have I don't know I'm gonna go through these ones on my own and probably come back and make a little video to follow up on this one so it says using cached pi game installing collected pi packages pi game successfully installed warning you are using pip da 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 man that warning is so annoying if you do if you are using if you just went to Python and downloaded the one of the latest like either 3.7 or 3.8 you know like one of those latest two versions available then you're probably safe to upgrade pip so if you want to do that just go pip I'm gonna do 3.7 just to make sure it does the right one even though I know it will because I'm in this folder and then I'm gonna say uh, install dash dash upgrade just to be politically correct pip and then that will do whatever stupid little stuff that pip's crying about and in a couple of weeks it will probably start complaining that I don't have the newest pip again if I am using it so we can see it successfully uninstalled the old pip and at any moment now it should reinstall the new pip after okay I'm gonna shrink this back down so this pi game intro we can just copy that Let's come back over here. Error could not install packages due to environment error. Access is denied. User update a local pip install. Da, 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 da. Consider using the user option or check permissions. Huh. So that's an interesting error there. See user veganase update a local temp pip install. Weird. Um, I'm going to do this. pip uninstall I'm gonna copy that much of it and paste it at the command line and then I'm gonna put parent percent symbols around this app data part and uh, that should automatically resolve to the app data folder and hit enter oops CD no cannot find the pass CD percent app data yeah, there's app data. It goes to roaming. Okay, so I'm going to cd dot dot cd local cd temp cd pip uninstall blah, 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 9y. And then here we have those things. So I'll go back. Whoa. That's weird that it has pip 3.7 in there. Anyway, I'm going to do an rmdir and then you can see that if I put in s and a q there then that will remove all subdirect whatever if the folder is not empty it will delete it and quiet won't ask me to do what i just if i want to do what i just told it to do and then i'm going to say pip tab completion boom now i'm going to go back up here and i wonder what if cd pip tab can't complete it it's gone okay so now we can go all the way back up to that pip install pi game I think was the step we were on. Requirement already satisfied. Pi game there. Okay. So whatever. I guess it's a good thing I ran through that so that you could see all the possible problems. Now I'm gonna I closed out that prompt. That was administrator prompt. You don't ever want to be root or administrator unless you absolutely need to be, and then you want to get out of there when you're done and restart a normal user command prompt. Or just type exit maybe and if you're in like Linux Unix environment and then it will take you right back to that user or close it and you reopen it like this I'm going to uh, type what or actually right here I have a link or I had a link if I go here and search for Python you can see there's Python 3.7 idle right so that's a graphical environment to be able to edit Python files in I'm going to open that and then I'm actually going to right click and pin this to taskbar. Now if I close it, um, let's see, Python exit, 
Then you can see I've got this handy dandy little icon on my bar up here. So I'm going to put that over there and then click it to show you it reopens it. Python 379, 64 bit on Windows 32, which is funny because it's not Windows 32, but that's just an old holdover. So I can close this now. Come over here to this Pygames doc tutorial, which I got by going to the pygame.org site, and then I think I went to docs. No, I didn't. I went to about, and then maybe this introduction for Pygame, and then I, that's how I got here. And then I'm going to triple click on that and scroll up to there, right click copy come back over here and I'll do a new file and I'll paste it and so there we have all that sample code and I'll do file uh, save as and I'll just save it to C temp cause you can save it to whatever folder you want right and um, in here just call it pi game dot pi something whatever just something to run it you can literally save it and name it whatever you want probably and be fine I just wouldn't save it under the Python tree itself which it shouldn't let you do but it might and then we can go to run which is also the same thing as hitting F5 and it's mad module pi game has no attribute in it really What the heck? Maybe this documentation's out of date with it. Pygame init. Okay, well, let's go over here then and do uh, comment that out with a hash and hit F5. Source must be saved. Okay. Pygame display set mode. Pygame has no attribute display. I'm starting to think the Pygame module is not there. So if we do a dir pygame. I haven't done Python in a minute, so dir like that pi game. We can see pi game is not defined, so import pi game. Attribute error pi game has no attribute display, so yeah, Python's being screwy. So uh, pip, actually, let me exit and do the command, the right click, run as administrator, pip uninstall pygame we'll remove yes so we can see it's include it's in the python 37 lib include or lib site packages let's see if it will do that same thing again if we do that same thing okay now it's actually saying it's uninstalled so once again I'm going to try and reinstall it under the administrator command prompt but first I'm going to close these windows to make sure that they're not holding open any uh, files that you know that not, might need to be replaced or whatever okay enter successfully installed exit relaunch that uh, idle and Go to recent files, Pygame, and then, you know what? I probably shouldn't have named it Pygame for one thing. I'm going to save it as something else. Save it as Pygame 2 because the actual Pygame is sort of like almost like a reserved word in this scenario. And then try for run Py, import sys Pygame has no attribute display huh oh maybe I need to get re-enable this here five okay okay something's really funky here I'm gonna have to figure this out and come back actually I'm back I'm didn't do anything except highlight this line I'm just gonna show you how to search for the problem in case you have a problem with it too I'll open a new window here and uh, just paste that right in and search for it that attribute error pipe game has no module and uh, then we can come over here to stack overflow and see what these people say they say you're probably overshadowing pygame library with any other file with the same name such as pygame.py 
which may be in the same file. If you are using Windows, just search for pygame.py in the search box in the start menu, right click the result, click open file location, just delete that file. Or you can print the path like that. Um, one person accepted that as the answer. You might need to call Pygame and knit. Make sure you don't call your own file, <laughs> what I called it. You must have accidentally overshadowed with your local interpreter. I think it's uh, suggested possibly Pygame that doesn't have that attribute. You can find out by calling Dirt Pygame, see which attributes it has. Um, you do not have to call a knit to get it working. Something else is wrong. I suspect overshadowing. That was from 2016. Okay, so what happened was I saved, I left pygame.py in that folder when I renamed this one. So what I probably need to do is go into that same folder that I was in and then delete pygame.py because it's trying to load this file in. And then exit back out and now it should work. All right, now it's working, except could not load intro ball dot gif, which makes sense. So we got this far, got the screen set up, all this stuff, which doesn't want to close for some reason. Um, maybe if I just close that window. So one thing too is if you go to um, exit, that's going to close all your idle Python idle windows, and close will just close the one that you're on. And if you like this blue background thing I have, what you can do is go to Options, Configure Idle. And uh, right here you can of course set, you know, if you want your font size exactly like mine and indention. I have 18 size, bold, 4 for indention on Corey or New, or you can change that to whatever you like. And then over here on the highlights, you'll want to choose... Um, I think maybe okay a built-in theme so yours is probably looking something like that you'll want to pick dark idle dark and what I did is I don't like when the comments are bright red like that so I built a custom theme off of idle dark and I did basically all I did was that I remember was change it to the gray comments like that so dark with gray comments and then just click OK apply OK all that kind of stuff and uh, now what was I at here I'm going to hit F5 one more time to run this and get that error again. Okay, and it says that the error was intro ball.gif missing. So what I can do is close that. Thanks for their help there. Um, I'll go ahead and give them a thumbs up on that. Oh, I'm not logged in. Oh, well. Um, so we need that intro ball gif. That's over here. It's right here. Hey, how handy. Save image as intro ball and I'm gonna save it in that same folder so it's right there and it doesn't have to search very far for it and go back here go back to this screen and hit F5 and there it is bouncing at light speed that ball so that's how you get uh, basically pi you know do a quick install of Python do a little install with pip and run a little sample program there from that Pygame intro and just copied and pasted this. So I plan to do more videos that go into more detail on what exactly is going on with all of this code and stuff, but maybe that will get you up and going with that. Thanks a lot for watching.